Hey guys, so today I am going to tell you the honest truth about your local game store and this can only come from someone who's owned a local game store. There is almost no way to make any money unless you are one of the bigger vendors like Channel Fireball or Rudy or that you're selling in such volume that your price point, um, you can deliver a lower price point to your customer or your customer is willing to pay a higher price for the same item, like a Card Kingdom, for instance. Based on your brand or reliability and any sponsorships you do, Card Kingdom, for instance, sponsors Hilarium Community College, and TCG Player at one point did sponsor Weds until he uh, stopped producing content. Now, on to the issue of your local game store. Um, the math of it, once I look at the numbers and it's no longer emotional. So I wanted to open a magic store because I've always wanted to have a magic or anime store. Now we did carry Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Frozen, Frozen 2, uh, Disney products, Legos was a really big hit, and K-pop and pluses. So each of these categories outperformed Magic the Gathering cards uh, with the exception of Yu-Gi-Oh. And the reason was, for the amount of money you make per Magic card, there are just easier ways to make money, right? So, for instance, if you sold a Lego set, you're selling it to parents, the parents want to take the Lego set home and build it with their kid or have their kid build it. They're not going to open the Lego set and build it in your store. Now, Friday Night Magic was a big, big loss leader for us. But, you know, you might say, oh, you're going to take the loss because you want to drive the traffic and build a community and get your name out there. Uh, true, but some people will still hate you regardless of whatever you accomplish or how well you run your store. So at my F&M, um, the players wanted double. So if they paid $5 cash, they wanted two times the prize support put into the pool. That would be $10. Now, in store credit. Now, there's nothing in our store. There's a very few items in the store that we make a 50% margin on. So it is a losing proposal just from the finances, right? So if I said, give me five bucks, I'll give you $10 store credit. Assuming the store prices are MSRP, it's a really, that's a really, really good deal for the customer. And that's what FNM became. Um, to be competitive. So if you want a turnout of eight people or 10 people or even 12 people, that's the only way to do it at my location. Now, my location has some issues, which I'm not going to go into. Uh, there, there's definitely mistakes um, made on my part. Um, and the failure of the company it falls on me because I'm the 100% owner of the company. No one else owned the company. And even if people made decisions, um, those decisions could have been usurped by my decision making because I own the company. So uh, there's no one to blame for it failing or it didn't fail in terms of like what you would naturally think of failing, like it ran out of money. Um, it failed in terms of it didn't make as much money as I expected. I gave it about a year to be self running. And because it was not self-running, I had to put my own time into it, which my time, you know, is very, very valuable um, because I consult at a very high rate. Um, I char my lawyer charges me $800 an hour. So I, it's not like I can work for $10, $15 an, or $15 an hour at my own store, right, to even afford an hour of my lawyer's time. So it wasn't... A failure in terms of you know I wanted in one year what was my plan I'm gonna tell you finally what the blanking plan was because I had a business plan and it was for the store to be self-running meaning I could spend maybe less than five hours a week at the store the stores would have the right employees they would have employees who could sell online they have the employees who can generate content they have employees who can do inventory or train. I mean, I thought a year would be enough to find these employees and train them, right? And then I wouldn't have to touch it. It would be a, as people call it, passive income. There was no way in blank that it would ever become that. And I don't think any store can ever become a passive income without the owner taking 
especially a store of that size, a very, um, I, I just cannot, like, the model did not exist. The model, the business model that I based my store on, it became pretty clear, um, apparent that this was not going to happen. Um, based on uh, the employees and honestly based on all the things that were missing so um, back to the point of this video is your store owner is in a lot of trouble right now and if you can support that store I would recommend you supporting the store now I know a lot of you guys may not have much money um, but my gosh, like you, I had no idea owning a store, I had no idea owning a store would be even remotely close, remotely close to the experience I had. It was awful. It was beyond terrible. It was something like out of a, it was a waking and living nightmare. It was a waking and living nightmare. Um, it just was. And I, I can only tell you um, from my personal experience that it was nothing like I expected it would be. Uh, a lot of the things like customer stealing or people stealing stuff. I just was not, I was not expecting that at all. Um, that was never put in the business plan, loss of merchandise, which it should have been because obviously I knew. Um, so I had put it on the online portion where I expected, you know, a percentage of loss. I forget what it was. It wasn't like very high. It's like one or 2% of uh, packages to be lost in the mail. But I did not put that in the in the business plan for the retail store, which turned out to be the number one reason that, you know, things went missing. Um, and then on top of that, just the, just the hatred, the hatred, the, I mean, just how much they hate you. And people that have never been to your store, who have never ordered online, um, people who leave you one-star reviews, people who leave you one-star review if they don't receive it. I mean, I don't even know how to put it in words. Like, I, I truly don't even know how I can explain this, um, except... It was scary. It was very, very scary. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't talk too much about this, but there were a lot of really creepy people who demanded X and Y and Z, who demanded free merchandise, who demanded this, who demanded that. Um, and... I don't know, like it's just so crazy to me that people, that if something is slightly late, they want it for free. Or if something is slightly gets damaged in shipping, they all want a full refund. And that's exactly what this guy is experiencing. He's experiencing um, something that is out of a nightmare, which is out of my nightmare, which is out of every local game store's nightmare. Where the customer is not behaving in a reasonable way the customer is not behaving logically they are behaving in a way that it's very clear that they do want to destroy you they don't want to just destroy your company they want to destroy you they want to make sure that your business fails they want to make sure that you know you don't have any money left they want to steal from you they want to cheat you they want to scam you um I mean, it's just one of these things that, like, I really, it baffled me um, just how much people hate game stores sometimes. 
that they've never been to just because someone posted in Reddit X, Y, and Z. Um, I don't know. It, it, it definitely is quite scary. It, it definitely is one of the more scary things um, that can happen. Was it a fun experience sometimes? Yes. Was it very stressful? Oh, yeah. Was it worth it? No. And for anyone to really want to do a local game store, please, please, please reconsider. Um, especially if you have a family or children or anything like that. Um, reconsider because it's probably not worth it. Bye, guys.